Well, hey, I'm going to ask a question. Uh, it's the first time I get to ans- ask this question this year, and so I know the, the answer is going to be super enthusiastic. Uh, and so here's the question. Who is excited to get into the Word of God today? Come on. Come on. We, we are a church that loves the Word of God. We value the Word of God. Come on. It's the first time we get to be together, 2022 get into the, the, the word of God. In fact, something that happens always, you know, we've been talking about the new year. One of the big things that people like to do in the new year is to have New Year's resolutions. Anybody ever hear of somebody doing a New Year's resolution? Uh, a New Year's resolution would be like this. Like somebody will have like, we say, in 2022, I want to exercise more. I want to lose weight. I want to get organized. I want to learn a new skill or a hobby. I want to live life to its fullest. I, I, I want to save money and spend less money. I want to quit smoking. I want to spend more time with my family and friends. I want to travel more. I want to read more. Have you ever heard any of these? Before, these are actually like the top 10, you, you search, on, search on Google, these are the top 10 uh, New Year's resolutions that people make uh, at the end of the year, going to the beginning of the year. And I want to let you know that usually in a New Year's re- resolution, people fail miserably. They, they are done with their resolutions usually by the end of the month, if not by the end of the first week. You're like, I want to lose weight, yet everybody and their, their, their brother gave you uh, Christmas cookies and candy for Christmas. And you're like, well, after, after I polish off all these cookies and candy, you're like, I just usually that New Year's resolutions. You know, if you've, you've made some resolutions, God bless you. Go for it. I'm trying to run every single day again. I'm back on the saddle. It's cold outside, but praise God, I got a treadmill in my basement. And, uh, um, but resolutions, it seems like you, you start off strong and you, and you taper out. And I want, I want to challenge us this year. In our church, Christian Assembly Foursquare Church, let's not make resolutions. Let's have a New Year's revolution. Can somebody say, not a resolution, but a, a revolution. What am I talking about? I'm talking about digging into the Word, finding out what God wants for you this year. Finding out what is it, God, that you want me to accomplish this year. Find it in the Word and then just, to quote Nike, just do it. Can, can we, can we do, it's, a, it's a New Year's Resolution. In fact, this morning I wanna I wanna dig right into the word. I want to get to First Thessalonians chapter five this morning. First Thessalonians chapter five is popping up on our screens. Originally, as of last night, uh, this message was a lot shorter. I had I had just a couple quick points I wanted to I want to jump into. I was gonna do the the it's like, man, what, what should we start off the year with? Oh, one of my favorite passages of scripture. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You ever heard that scripture, popular scripture? I had a great message planned that just had a few points I was going to give you guys and, and get you out of here. And the more I dug, the, God said, go, keep going, keep going, keep going. Last night, as I'm, I'm trying to just hammer out those few points and say, okay, I got a nice, good New Year's message, uh, uh, I started to find myself going all the way back to verse 12 and going all the way to the end of this, this chapter. It was really the end of Paul's letter uh, to the church in Thessalonica um, where I started to, to write what God wants us to do. The, 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 the original message was New Year's resolution, what God wants us to do in 2022. And I had just a couple points. But the more I dug, I, I started to get surprised. I said, no, this isn't happening, is it? And I, I got to the end uh, writing the things that are in this passage of Scripture, these final instructions that Paul writes in this letter. And there were 22 things. Uh, so I have a 22-point message for you this morning that we're going to move quick on. If you find me stepping away from the podium, yell at me. I need to get back to my notes. Otherwise, we'll be here till 2023. Uh, but, but these are 22 things that, that God wants us to do in 2022. And I don't think this is a coincidence. It's not me just playing around with numbers. There is exactly 22 things in this passage of Scripture. And I think God is, yeah, this is for the church forever and ever and amen. But I think this is for us in this season uh, today, in this season, 2022. That God has for you things that He wants us to do in 2022. So let's look at the, the passage of Scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting with verse 12. This is the end of this, this amazing letter that Paul writes. And this is what he writes He says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and, to, and who admonish you. 
Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace and, uh, with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's pray. God, I'm thankful for your word this morning. I'm thankful for what you have for us, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that people would receive something fresh from you today. Lord, would you transform our lives, Lord, through the power of your word. We love you so much and we trust you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. And so I got 22 uh, things that God wants us to do in 2022, so I'm just going to jump right to it. I don't have any funny story to start off with. I just want to get right to it. Is that okay with everybody? Number one, honor your spiritual leaders. Honor your spiritual leaders. Right off the get-go in verse 12 in these final instructions that Paul writes, he says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, who ad- and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. I, I want to say, I don't know who, who did this, when it started, how it started, but, but somewhere along the line, somebody dubbed the month of October as Pastor's Appreciation Month. And you guys, uh, actually the last couple of years, uh, uh, really blessed me and really blessed pastors at this church and, and given gifts and prayed over us, uh, you know, and, and you had a Sunday designated for that. And, and I just want to let you know, I, I can speak for myself and behalf of all the, the pastors here in that church, that goes a long way. We really feel loved when you do that. We really feel encouraged when you do that. But, but can, can you do us a favor? Can, can you honor us not just on that day in that month, but throughout the year? Not, not with with so much with, with gifts and, and monetary things, and, and, and if you like to still give gifts, I'm size 10 and a half, Garrett told you I like shoes. Um, <laughs> but I don't expect that ever. But, but, but here's what I'm, I'm asking you, and I have no, no qualms about asking you to honor us this way because Paul asked to, for leaders to be honored this way, and he actually wrote it in the Bible, and so I think it's the Bible. It's okay for me to talk about. Can you, can you do this? Can you commit this 2022, maybe pray for your leaders? To, to fight for your leaders, to fight for our family, to ask God to keep us healthy, uh, to ask God to, 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 to bless us and to, to give us wisdom. Can, can you, can you uh, uh, stand up and, and, and stick up for us when people are talking about us behind our backs? Could you, could you cr- crush gossip in this church if you hear somebody saying, well, Pastor Matt, da, 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 just stop them right there, or Pastor Linda or Pastor Kent, just stop them right there and say, hey, we don't gossip in this church, actually we uphold our leaders. Come on, this is a biblical principle, and um, uh, this is, I, I feel like, something God wants us to do. He wants us to honor spiritual leaders. I, and I love the fact that Paul even acute, uh, puts this in there. He doesn't say, your spiritual leaders who love you, who just encourage you. He also says, your spiritual leaders who admonish you, correct you, rebuke you. Uh, you know what, we're in a day and age right now where people don't agree with the pastor and he has maybe a stern word for them. You know what they do? They get up and they leave the church. Well, I'm going to find another pastor that I can agree with. I didn't like that word this morning. I didn't agree with what that pastor said, so I'm going to find a church. I'm going to find a church where the pastor preaches what I want him to preach. That's no way to live. Could you just maybe in 2022 let your pastors and leaders challenge you to maybe see how God wants to move in your life in a new perspective and just be challenged and grow this this season? Can I get an amen from somebody? All right. Number two, we're going to keep moving. Be a peacemaker. Come on, Paul says right there in verse 13, he says, live in peace with each other. I think, I think 2022, the church needs to get back to being peacemakers. Where we need to get back to, to saying, you know, we are going to be the ones who make peace. Why? Because Jesus was, was really clear in his famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. What does Jesus say? He says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. 
I think a lot of time we get it backwards. We like to be called the children of God, but we're not peacemakers. We, we, we in the church, we, 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 well, we're going to stand up for our rights. We're going to stand up for that. And we're, I'll let you know, there's going to be a lot of people in, not just in the world, but in, we'll, we'll narrow it down to your world. There are people in your world who are going to do you dirty. They are going to do you wrong. Listen, somebody in your family is going to do you wrong. Your boss is going to do you wrong. Uh, uh, listen, the, the system that we live in is going to do you wrong. The government's going to do you wrong. And what do we do? We want to we wanna, we wanna rise up and we want to stand up and don't how dare you. And, and, we, and, and um, we get to a spot where we're like, hey, we got we to gotta just take a step back. What did God call us to do? He called us to be peacemakers. If you are children of the most high God, if you are children of God, the only reason Jesus says you are children of God is blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. You notice he didn't say blessed are the troublemakers? He said blessed are the peacemakers. There, listen, now there's a difference between pointing your finger at somebody and saying you are the problem and instead of looking at that person and pointing this way and saying, hey, I want to I show you the answer. I'm going to show you the Prince of Peace. In 2022, we need to be peacemakers. Number three, we need to call people up. Verse 14 says that, and I urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. What is Paul saying? He says, hey, we need to address people in the church who are lazy and they're making waves. Uh, he calls us in this passage to encourage those, or excuse me, he's calling us those in this passage not to call them out, to bring, hey, hey, brother so-and-so, brother Broadbottom's a lazy, you know, person in our church. Let's just call, hey, and let's just point at him and let's just tell him what a, what a jerk he is. No, the Bible, the Bible says what Paul is saying is not to call them out, but to call them up, to show them a way, to model something good for them. Number four, be an encourager. Also in verse 14, he says, encourage the disheartened. One of the things in 20, uh, 20 and 2021, those two years especially, that I've seen that worked really well, it's taken the wind out of people's sails. People who were once confident and bold have found themselves second-guessing themselves. Uh, they find themselves, uh, their confidence is gone. Their determination has diminished. And what Paul calls us to do in this passage is to encourage those who are losing heart. Encourage the disheartened. I believe that the confidence that Jesus has put on the inside of you, the confidence and the boldness that you have because of the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, I believe as you encourage others, what's in you will be on them. What, 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 what you are about will suddenly rub off on other people. And I believe, I believe, there's, I believe in the power of transference that when other Christians are, are, are feeling lonely or feeling blue or, or losing heart, I, I believe the Bible says to do what? To lay hands on people. There's something about community Community. There's something about saying, hey, Lanny, I got you today, man. There's something about sending an encouraging text. There's something about just being an encourager in someone's life that can lift them up, that, can, that what's on you will suddenly be on them. In fact, Hebrews chapter 3, uh, the author of Hebrews tells us in verse 13, but encourage one another daily as long as it's called today. You know what I like about today? Today is today, and today's the day to encourage. When we get to tomorrow, guess what tomorrow's called? Today. That's a day to encourage. But when we get to the end of this month, and, and, this, and when we get to February, it's still, when we get there February 1st, guess what? It's still be called today. That's a day that we get to encourage each other. If we're not encouraging each other, we're missing it, because the Bible says to encourage each other while it's called Today. So what's a good day to encourage someone? Today. Number six, let patience, or no, number five, excuse me, I jumped the gun. Number five, look to help. Look to help. Also in verse 14, Paul writes this, help the weak. We need to look to help. There is no shortage, listen, there is no shortage of those who are weak around us. 
Look around. People are sick. People are broken. People are in need. Uh, people are in the middle of bad seasons. There's, there's the weak all around us. And, and Paul is charging us through the power of the Holy Spirit for us to be help to the weak. In fact, many times we'll, we'll do this. We think being help is this. It's just praying for people. Oh, you're, you're in a bad situation. Well, let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Let me pray. That's good, but sometimes did you know that while you are praying for somebody, God is answering the prayer that you are praying by putting you in that position right where you are so that you can be helped to somebody. So you can be a blessing to somebody. Come on, James talks about it. He says, hey, we need to let our faith become alive. We need to have a living faith. Don't just pray and say, hey, I hope you stay warm. I hope, I hope, I hope you know, yeah, everything's good. I hope you get fed. No, we, we need to say, hey, we, we need to, to, to put our faith into action. So there's sometimes we need to recognize that we are the help that we've been praying for for somebody's life. Amen? Number six, let patience win. Oh, this is the hard one. Let patience win because I love what, what, what Paul, how he finishes up verse 14. He says, be patient with oh, everyone. Dang it, Paul. You're messing me up, man. Be patient with everyone. This is a hard one. Why? Because we are not naturally patient. We are naturally impatient. Just put me in the line at Disneyland. You know what I mean? 100 degrees out waiting to ride the teacups. I once, sorry, I said no tangents. I once went to Disneyland. They had the brand new Cars ride. And we, we went to the Cars ride. We waited for three and a half hours in 95 degree weather. And we finally got to the front. It was our turn. And the stupid car said, sorry, everybody, the ride is broken down. Oh, man. We, we waited still. I'm like, I'm with, wait, four and a half hours to ride this right now. Um, we got on. This is a hard one we're not patient yet. Paul didn't say, hey, just be patient with people that we love. He says, be patient with everyone. That means people who rub you the wrong way, people who get under your skin, people who know that you have more buttons in an elevator and they like to press every single one like Buddy the Elf. Come on, people who you just can't stand. Listen, this is hard to do. You cannot be patient on your own power. We, only reason that we can be patient is because the power of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is producing fruit in our lives. What Galatians 5 talks about, the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Number seven, recognize that you are not the judge. You might watch Judge Judy, but listen, you are not Judge Judy. You are not the judge. You are not the jury. You are not the executioner. Verse 15, the beginning of verse 15, Paul writes, Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong. Who is that nobody he's talking about? He's probably talking about you. Because this is something we love to do when somebody does us wrong. Remember, we're supposed to be peacemakers. But what we like to do is we like to say, oh, how can I pay them back? How can I rectify this situation so I can feel satisfied in life that the person that did me wrong, I can do something to make them pay? And there's a lot of people that do, do us wrong. I listed that before, but, your mom does you wrong sometimes. The systems do you wrong. The government does you wrong. You know what you know what the Bible says? The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 19, Paul writes this. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. It's God's business. He's the judge. You are not. Next one. Number eight. Put others first second part of verse 15 after he says hey don't don't pay anybody back wrong for wrong but he says this but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else everyone else it's it's not too hard to live for jesus when you're putting other people's needs in front of your needs did you know that it's not too hard to get close to god 
when you are serving other people. Why? Because this is the heart of Jesus. When Jesus came to this world and lived among us as, as a man, he said this, I didn't come, even though I'm the King of Kings, even though I'm the Lord of Lords, even though I'm the Messiah, I'm the Christ, I'm God, I didn't come to this earth to be served, I came to this earth to serve. This is the heart of, of Jesus that we would, we would have this heart, that we say, hey, we're going to put other people's needs in front of our needs, and we are going to be a blessing, and we are going to serve, and we are going to love the way that Jesus loved. Number nine, be full of joy. Come on, quick, simple verse, verse 16. Rejoice sometimes. Rejoice when you feel like it. Rejoice Every second Tuesday of the month. No, it says rejoice when? Always. All the time. What time is it? It's rejoicing time. That means means we should be ready to party at the drop of the hat. We should be ready to rejoice. We should be full of joy. Now, now, I I love the fact that Paul didn't write, says be happy all the time. We're not happy all the time. Because that's not what joy is. Happiness is is a fleeting emotion that comes and goes periodically, but I want to let you know joy is something eternal that God has put on the inside of our our hearts, and that's why we as Christians, the world looks at us so weird. While our world is seemingly falling apart, where it seems like nothing is going right in the middle of all of that, we can stand and we can rejoice knowing that we have a good God that has good things for his people. Come on, when, when it seems like everything is turned upside down, we can still stand and we can still be full of joy because joy is something that the enemy cannot steal it's a gift from God his joy is our strength so what time is it it's it's about rejoice o'clock amen number 10 do not or do not have a busy signal verse 17 My friend Terry likes this verse. Pray continually. Pray continually. Now, that's an intimidating verse. I want to let you know what Paul isn't expecting you to get up in the morning and and, and kneel by your bed, kneel down in your bed and begin to pray. And the Bible says pray continually, so I just got to stay right here and I just got to keep praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. Oh, the sun just went down. Is it bedtime? Okay, now I can go back to bed. Paul isn't saying to do that. What is Paul saying? Paul is saying get in the attitude of prayer. Have an open line of communication with God. Well, what is the what is the what is the busy signal? You guys remember we don't have, we have phones now that that just I mean leave messages and there's call or call waiting and all that kind of stuff. You know, back in the the mid '80s and the the early '90s, if there was a teenage girl at the house that you were trying to call, you could never get through. You couldn't leave a message. There was a signal that would come up called the busy signal. You guys remember the busy signal? One of the worst. Sounds in the world, eh, eh, you know, like what, what in the world, eh, 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 like it's going in your ear, it's a busy signal. What does that mean? It means somebody else is on the phone, the line is not open, there is no communication that you can have with that household now because that 17-year-old girl is on the phone with her boyfriend or friend and she will be there on the phone until 2 a.m. <laughs> not my house, but still. Paul is trying to let us know, hey, we don't have to have a busy signal. That when God, listen, prayer is what? Prayer is a two-way street. Prayer is us talking to God, but what else is it? It's God talking to us. And Paul's saying, hey, pray continually. Always have an attitude where you, you, in the the, the drop of a hat, in in the moment that your heart is soft enough where God, the spirit of the living God, can just speak a word to you and you can receive it. And be, be ready in, in, in the moment knowing that, hey, uh, that prayer isn't a last resort in your life, that it's actually the first resort, that you can call out to God and we know that he'll hear us and he will 
answer us. That's one of the things I'm so excited about to start off this year. Uh, 21 days of, of prayer and fasting. We have these guides out in the lobby. If you didn't get one yet, we're starting next week on, on Monday. Uh, this is something that we do in Foursquare worldwide. And so we, our church gets to be a part of it uh, where we get to pray. What's, what's fasting? Fasting is just giving something up as, as you pray. Uh, for some people, it's food. For some people, it's, it's uh, TV. For some people, it's social media. But whatever it is, I want to encourage us as a church church. They said, I don't know how am I going to do this. It's, it's really easy. A lot of people think that you have to pray for hours at a time, but you can just even take five, ten minutes a day. Say, I'm going to go through, use this guide. I'm going to pray. It has prayer steps in there for you. If you have kids, uh, whether there's a family one right here you can do with your kids, it's powerful. If you can pray for 21 days straight, I want to let you know it, it forms a habit on the inside of you that won't be broken. And so I want to encourage you, be a church that prays in 2022. Amen? Come on, number 11, moving right along. Have the attitude of gratitude. Verse 18 says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Did you catch that? It's God's will that you're thankful. It's God's will that you have gratitude in your life. As believers, we should be eternally grateful for the work that Jesus is doing on the inside of us. Your sins were many, and God has forgiven your sins. You have something to be grateful for. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. There's a lot of things that we have to be grateful for. Come on. Now I want you to know that thankfulness builds trust in Jesus. You want to know how can I trust Jesus? Begin to start to look at all the things that he has done for you. Have a heart of gratitude and say, no, it's easy to trust Jesus. Because my heart's so thankful. Come on, the next one, number 12, stay hot. That's a good verse on a cold morning like this. Stay hot, meaning this, verse 19, do not quench the spirit. I want to let you know that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, if you are a believer, he is inside of you. He is burning hot. He is burning bright. There's power for you this morning through the Holy Spirit. He wants to do the miraculous through you. And here's how we can quench him. We can, when we walk away from his will, when we walk away from his ways, when, when we do those things, say, I'm going to be disobedient to the leading of the Spirit of my life. It's like taking that, that hot fire that's inside of us and taking a, a pitcher of water and just just quenching that fire, just extinguishing that fire. I want to let you know we need to let this fire that's inside of us burn bright. The way to do that is to listen to the Spirit and follow his leading. Amen? Number 13, have an open heart. Verse 20, in the first part of verse 21, says, Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. What does that mean? I want to let you know in 2022, God wants to speak to you. And he does in many different ways. He'll do it through the word. He'll do it through prayer. But you know what? One of the ways that God can speak to you is through other people. That, that there's some people that, that operate in the gift of prophecy and they don't even know they have this gift. That they just, they just open their mouth and they, they tell you something that's from God. And, and you say, well, how do I, I, I've had people tell me things in the past, and I've been burnt in the past, and I've listened to people, I've trusted people, and I found out that that wasn't a good word for me, and, and well, how do, how do I know when somebody gives me a word of prophecy if it's really from God? Well, I see, the, the Paul says right here, we test all of those words that are given to us. How do we test it? We filter it through the word of God. Do you know that this, that God, when, when we prophecy, when real prophecy is, is spoken to you, that God will always confirm his word? That when we get into scripture, uh, we can see, well, man, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so said this, and look it, right here, this is what the word of God says. That totally, come on, that what they're saying is backing up what the word of God is already telling me. That, that prophecy shouldn't be something like just brand new out of the blue, some new weird doctrine. No, it should be something that's already God speaking to you, the Bible, and you've, you've done your devotions, you've read the Bible, and you say, oh, man, it's a good word, and, and all of a sudden somebody tells you the exact same thing, maybe in a different way, you're like, Woo! God just confirmed what he already told me in his word. I'm going to double down on this now. I'm going to go for it. Come on, this is, this is what we do. We filter it through the word of God. And I want you to know, if somebody gives you a word and it doesn't line up with this book, that word is not from God. Amen? Next one, number 14. i got to keep moving here, people. Get a grip. Look at your neighbor and say, get a grip. Get a grip. What, what is that? Verse 21b says this, hold on to what 
is good. In 2022, listen, we need to hold on to what is good. There's a lot of bad things happening all around us in this world. There's a lot of things that are, are, are just junk and garbage and, and things that are cluttering our lives. I love what Paul says, says hold on to what is good. Good. Do yourself a favor this year, and anything that you have is good, and anything that you have is from God. Just tighten your grip a little bit on that thing. I'm going to hold on to this. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's a it's a, a relationship or a, a, a friendship. Maybe maybe it's just the time that you've set aside that you have to spend time with God, and and you th- see things starting to clutter your life, and that time seems to be dissipating. No, no, no. Hold on to what. Is good. James tells us in James 1.17 that every good and perfect gift from above comes down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change or cast a, a shifting shadow. Come on, what, the, the gifts that we have that are good, they're from God. Hold on to what is good. Get a grip. Number 15, every, every wife in this, in this church probably likes this one. Clean your house. Husbands. No, this is what I mean by that. Verse 22, rejects every kind of evil. we got to reject every kind of evil. One of, my, one of my favorite movies from way back in the day, and it's kind of been revived because they got a show called Cobra Kai on Netflix, but I remember the old school, the, the Karate Kid movie back from the 80s. And I remember the scene that, that is actually impactful to me, even though it's the bad guys that are doing this. You, you kind of get this scene in the dojo, and all the, all the students are, are, are lined up in perfect formation, and then they are kind of got their little karate stance going on, and their sensei is walking up and down the aisles, and he's saying this, fear does not exist in this dojo, does it? And all the students answer back, no, sensei. He's like, pain does not exist in this dojo, does it? No, sensei. Come on, uh, uh, a defeat does not exist in this dojo, does it? No, sensei. This is the type of attitude that we need to take when it comes to evil things entering our lives and entering our families and entering our house. It's time for the church to take a stand. Come on, lust does not exist in our house, does it? Come on, gossip does not exist in our house, does it? Profane speech does not exist in our house, does it? Come on, it's in 2022, can you take a stand and just say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reject every kind of evil that wants to infiltrate itself into my family, into my life, into, into my eyes, into my ears, into my household. I'm gonna reject those things and I'm gonna take a stand for what is righteous and what is holy and what is pure. Can somebody say amen? Number 16, be set apart. Paul begins to write in verse 23, says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. Come on, we need to be set apart from this world. What's okay for others doesn't have to be okay for us. Verse, number 17, take care of your whole self. Take care of your whole self. The, the second part of verse 23, Paul writes, May your whole spirit, soul, and body Be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means every part of you, your body, your soul, your spirit. What is your spirit? Spirit is who you are. It's what connects you to God. Because God is spirit, we are connected to God through our spirit. What is your soul? Come on, we learned about it a few weeks ago. It's, it's our mind, it's our will, it's our, it's our emotions. We want to take care of those things, make sure that those things are healthy. And, and, and then we get to the one that we don't like to talk about so much because the biggest Christian sin is just... Uh, Eat a lot of food and it's okay because it's not so bad. No, listen, he says be blameless in your bodies. Come on, that means, that means yeah, we, we, we think of that. Like, well, we need to be sexually pure. Yeah, absolutely. Also, uh, we, we don't need to let other things in either. The Bible says, Paul tells us what? That our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Come on, that means, that means when you are eating too much fried chicken on a Sunday afternoon, you're actually sinning against God. Did you know that? I, I, I'm, conv- I'm convicted just preaching that right now. Garrett said it, I'm a foodie. I like food. He got really quiet in the room. <laughs> it's the Christian sin, everybody. Gluttony is my favorite. I know. Mine too. Take care of your whole self. Number 18, be dependent. Be dependent. Verse 24, for those who call, or the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. 
I think, I think we, we've spent so much time trying to become independent in our lives. We want to be independent from our parents and independent. You know, I'm an independent woman. I'm an independent man. And we, we, we want to be independent. And, you know, praise God we live in a country that's independent. That's great. But when it comes to God, we don't want to be independent from God. We want to be solely dependent on him and what he has for us. Because he's the one who will do it. He's the one who will equip you. He's the one who will empower you. He's the one will, who, who will walk with you. And yes, he's given you a big call in your life. And the only way that you're going to walk out that call is what? He's going to do it in you. Be completely dependent on him. Number 19, pray outwards. Meaning this, verse 25 says this, brothers and sisters, Pray for us. What is Paul doing? Paul is unashamedly asking the believers in that church in Thessalonica to pray for him. Do you know what kind of needs that church had? They had a lot of needs. They had a lot of things going on. They had a lot of things that they could be praying for. They could be praying for themselves. But Paul says, I think ask them to pray for him. Why? A, because he needed prayer and he wasn't ashamed to ask for prayer. But B, he's trying to show them something that, hey, when we pray, there's something powerful about praying for other people's needs, for praying for things that aren't your needs. In fact, I believe this. I believe that if you spend more time praying for other people's needs than you don't do for your needs, God will honor that and bless you that. Guess what? He'll meet your needs. Amen? Come on, let's be a people that prays outwards. It's a good lesson for us to focus on. Let's 2022 be a year where we're praying outwards. Oh, but my family, but my needs, but my financial situation, but my health. No, listen, have a mindset to pray for others first. Watch what God does. I like this next one. We're headed, to, we're headed home, everybody. We're on third base. We are we're sprinting towards home base. Number 20, pucker up. Come on, one of the the, the taboo verses that we were not allowed to quote during COVID. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. Listen, obviously this was a cultural thing. Can we just all agree with that? If you read this verse, you got excited like, ooh, I'm going to get busy after church. No. Singles ministry loves this verse. I don't know why. This was a cultural thing. This is how they greeted each other in Paul's time. But I think in this simple verse, there's something powerful that we can learn that, that Paul says that this is the way that we greet each other. Yep, we greet each other with a holy kiss. But you notice what he says? Greet all God's people with a holy kiss, meaning we greet everyone. That when somebody walks into this church, that we don't get to decide who belongs here and who doesn't, who gets greeted and who doesn't. And it, it just I like I like these people because it's my interest and my hobbies and, and the way they make me feel and, and our, our, our political affiliation and, and the way that we, so I, I'll, I, this is my clique, this is my group right here. And it's okay to have close friends. Jesus had 12 close friends. And out of those 12 close friends, he even had three that were even closer than anybody else. That's okay, but at the same time, Jesus was for everyone. What Paul is saying, say, hey, greet all of God's people with the Holy Kiss. Meaning anybody who walks through the doors of this church, they're, they're a child of God. We need to greet them with the love of Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, pucker up, buttercup. Come on, we need, to, we need to get out the spiritual chapstick, so to speak. Show love to God's people. Show love to those who come through the doors of this church. Uh, number 21. I'm just going to ask the, the worship band to come up. i only got two left here. We're going to end with a song in just a moment. I like this one. Study together. Verse 27, Paul says this. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. You know who received this letter? It's the, usually the pastors and leaders of the church would receive these epistles from Paul. And Paul's saying, don't, leaders, this is good stuff for you, yes, you need to learn what I'm writing. I think Paul knew, like, like I'm writing scripture here, people. It's good for the leaders of that church, but he said, don't just keep it with you, leaders. You need to get this in front of everybody. There's something powerful well, not just on a Sunday morning, but also in, in, in times when we have small groups, our small group seasons, that we get together 
and we read the word together and we study the word together, what does that do? It helps us, A, to grow closer to Jesus, which is, I think we all agree is a good thing. But also, what does it do when we study together? It helps us grow closer with each other in fellowship. So so next time we have a small group season, don't blow it off. Ah, it's not that important. I don't have time for it. You, you can't afford not to go. We need community. We need to study the word of God together. This should be what binds us together. And the last thing, we kind of talked about this during communion, but it's so good. Number 22 out of the 22 things that we should be doing in 2022. Live in his grace. Verse 28, Paul ends his letter this way. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That's one of those things that we read books like 1 Thessalonians, we get to the end, and I'm like, okay, that's, yep, that's his benediction. The grace of the Lord. Well, there's something powerful about that. Think about it. Let the grace of God Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I think some of our problems is we haven't let God's grace be. God's grace is there. God's grace will cover us. God's grace will forgive us. But we've lived in seasons where we said, I've just gone too far. And we've, we've rejected God's grace. There's been times in my life, I remember my, my, my 20s where I'm just running rampant. I'm supposed to be living for Jesus. And I wanted to get back with God. But I said, I've just gone too far. God wants to punish me, not forgive me. That's such a lie from the enemy. Listen, 2022, live in his grace. I don't care what you did in 2021. Live in his grace. I don't care what you said to your neighbor, to your mom on the phone. I don't, I don't care what kind of Facebook post that you, you wrote and now you feel all icky about it. Listen, live in his grace. Let his grace cover you in 2022. Now, I believe, I believe we can do these 22 easy things. Seems like a lot, but it's not. It's just following what the Bible says. We can have victory in situations in our lives. We can see people come to know the Lord. I believe if we as a church, we said we're just going to live this way, I, I guarantee you sinners will get saved. I, I guarantee you people who are far from God, who have been running from God, that once knew the love of God, will be drawn back into his presence and to community with other believers. They'll begin to live in his grace. And I believe if we do these things, we begin to pray out words and we, we begin to be thankful. And we Come on, God can use that to build our lives, but work through us to build other lives. God can use that to, to reach young people in, in Boise, Idaho. God, God can use that to, to build his church here in Missoula and beyond. Amen? Do you believe that, church? Come on, can we do this? Can we just all bow our heads and close our eyes? Maybe you're here and say, I just want to commit my my life. 2022, I just want to recommit my life to Jesus. I want to to start taking steps forward. I want to start living like this. If that's you and you want to take a step forward and begin to do these 22 things in your life and say, I'm I'm taking this moment, this first Sunday of the year as a as a, as a monument to, to begin to, to, to live my life for Jesus again. If that's just you, can you just lift your hand up on the count of three? I want to pray with you. Here we go. One, two, three. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good. Good. Yeah. Come on. Great decisions. You're starting the year off right. I love it. You put your hands down. Let's do this. Let's all stand up together. I just want to pray over you this morning. Jesus, I'm so grateful, Lord, for those who raised their hands this morning and said, I want to rededicate this year to you. I want to go forward. There's things in in this list that are lacking in my life, and I need those things, Lord. I pray, God, I'm just reminded, Lord, that that it's you, God. Lord, I love what it says, that that it's he who does it, that you do it, God. You do it in us. And so I pray, God, as we put our faith into action, Lord, and we begin to try to live out these steps, would you give us power from on high, God, to walk this out this year, that this would be a year full of blessing and full of favor and increase in goodness, Lord, and and, and, and healing, God, Lord, and all the good things that you have for us, Lord, and it's all because you love us, God. It's all because you're empowering us, God, to live for you. Lord, I pray, God, Lord, let this be a year, Lord, where we uh, are bathed in your word, 
and bathed in prayer, God, and, and, and just taking big, not baby steps, but big steps forward, Lord, in our faith. We're so thankful, Lord, for who you are, for what you're doing. You surely are an amazing God. We love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, can we do this? Can we applaud the Lord together? If you are encouraged by today's message, go ahead and click the like button and leave us a comment to let us know you're listening. Also, you can hit that subscribe button right there as we upload a brand new video every single week. If you have a prayer need or want to find out more about our church, you can visit us at camissoula.org. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.